Chapter 1 11.15 p.m. A flustered superior adjusted her cleavage within the black and pink, deep-cut V-neck sleeveless leotard suit she wore that went past her navel area, while her intimate dancing partner, already dressed, stood in a lazy stance watching her. She finished dressing by properly pulling up her thigh-high black half-boots and adjusting her long forearm bracers. Well, that was fun, he said with a cheerful voice. What part? she asked, finally looking up at him. You banging me in the Hall of Heroes against the Freedom Statue? Or winter night walking in and watching us the whole time? Her sexual partner donning a colorful white and red bodysuit with a massive lightning symbol on his chest, matching red boots, gloves, and a cowl that covered everything except his glowing white eyes, shrugged his shoulders as a chuckle came out of him, while flickering sparks of electricity ran over different parts of his body from time to time. I bet you he was in view mode, taking pictures and jacking off to us. Hope he saves it to his hard drive, Superior smirked, because at the stroke of midnight, everything will be gone like the wind. Still not considering coming over to the new platform? She started with a slow head shake before verbally answering him. Nope. You know, Mighty Mike got to beta test the new platform. State-of-the-art graphics, running and flying across continents without the need of a jump portal. They even created actual space for interplanetary battles. With the understanding that you can't transfer your current character from this platform to the new one, Superior coldly said while wearing a sardonic smile. Pissing away the three painstaking years it took me to build and max out this character? Forcing me to start from scratch? Let's not forget the removal of the adult package because they want to promote a family-friendly game. At least they reimbursed us our credits for all of the add-on packages and equipment we bought to either keep or use on the new game. He shrugged for a second time. Starting from scratch can also be a good thing. Especially for you. A dull, irritating glare formed on Superior's face as she read into his last sentence. She still decided to verbally inquire about his remark. What the hell does that mean? The lightning wielder held up his hands, gesturing that he wasn't trying to offend her. It's no secret your reputation wasn't the best around here. You've been kicked out of more leagues than anyone. Twenty-five total, she proudly grunted. You're a hell of a player, especially during co-op missions, he continued but your antics either tend to rub people the wrong way or outright offend them. A sinister, sensual smile grew on her lips. Superior clasped her hands behind her back underneath the soft, wet, leather maroon cape that stopped inches from the floor. She did it to push out her busty bosom, barely held underneath the scantily clad bodysuit she wore as she stepped into his personal space. Why, Sparkrod, I thought you enjoyed my antics. All I'm saying is, this could be a fresh start for you. Sparkrod concluded with a lump in his throat. Come to the new platform with a different character and name. We can do co-op operations together to level up faster. Once we get enough experience points, we can either join a league or form one all by ourselves. As far as the adult stuff, we can always go somewhere else for that. That's a whole lot of we I hear with this proposal. Superior said, with a head tilt and a raised eyebrow. I'm just saying, the new platform would be boring without you. Reading the true meaning behind his words, Superior lowered her head, letting out a disappointed sigh. (sighs) Look, Sparkrod, the only reason I joined this MMO is because I can't stand fantasy games, and I got bored of shooters. The bonus was getting to do on occasion what we just did, anywhere we wanted. That was before the creators found out some miners were bypassing the parental controls, Sparkrod interjected. The point I'm trying to make is, once something no longer becomes fun for me, I no longer choose to invest in it. This was fun while it lasted. Now it's time for me to move on. Sounds like something a guy would say, Sparkrod snorted while folding his arms. So now we get to the heart of the matter, she said, taking a step closer to him. You want to know if the person behind this character has a nice wet slit or a stiff twig and berries. Well, do you? 
Do you really want to know that answer? Don't answer a question with a question, Sparkrod shot back. Look, Superior, you're a really cool person, all right? I like you. You're a load of laughs and hot as hell, especially when we're cybersexing. But there are a ton of red flags that go off with you at times. The way you objectify your character and other female players? I also know I'm not the only male player you've done it with on here. <laughs> I've also banged girls, aliens, gods, demons, and cosmic beings. Your point is? We both know the adult attachments work whether you have a male or female character. If you're a guy, it's no big deal. Why? Because you're gay? No, I'm actually straight, Sparkrod answered. I'm not lying when I say I like you. I'm not a prude, either. If you're a guy, I can chalk it up to two people messing around on the web having fun. I'd still want to hang out with you on the new platform. If you're a girl, and single, I wouldn't mind wanting to know more about you, if you want. Superior, with her hands now at her hips, simulated the blowing of breath through her nostrils with her head slightly lowered. She raised it back up, causing strands of her bright pink long mane to fall covering a part of her face as she looked him in the eyes. Three scenarios are standing right in front of you. One, I'm a man who created a hot-looking female character who likes to get his rocks off watching her get banged in between missions, which means you and every other dude and gal in here were nothing more than a tool for me to play out my fantasies. Two, I'm a woman, comfortable with her sexuality, who likes to get screwed in between missions, which means you and every other guy and gal in here were nothing more than a tool to get me off. Three, I'm a minor who managed to bypass the adult settings. Do I need to repeat the rest? An uncomfortable spark rod dropped his arms, taking a step backward, getting space between them. With two to one odds, all with no chance in hell of ever being in a relationship with me no matter who I am, Superior pressed. Do you really want to roll that dice? Because I will answer if you ask me again. It's late, Sparkrod flatly answered. I've got to get up in the morning for a meeting. Have a nice life, Spark. What are you going to do? It's 11.30 now. I'm going to run a flight obstacle course one last time, Superior answered. See if I can beat my old score before I leave. Have fun. Just make sure you're not in here at midnight when the platform shuts down. Dude, you watch way too much anime, Superior scoffed. All they're gonna do is auto-boot me out, like when they do weekly maintenance. So, I guess this is goodbye. Yep. Mind if I take one final normal selfie with us before I leave? Superior accepted with a nonchalant shrug. Sure, why not? They bridged the gap between one another as he placed his right hand around her waist resting it at her hip, while she did the same, placing her left hand at the small of his back. A holographic camera appeared out of nowhere, taking the pictures. It took three back to back, with the last one of Superior placing bunny ears behind his head with her fingers while kissing him on his right cheek. They released one another, with Superior taking a could-care-less stance. Well, take care of yourself, Superior. Maybe I'll see you around the web on another game or forum. Maybe, she shrugged. You're not going to let loose one last time? Of course I am, he grinned. Taking a kneeling stance as if he was about to break into a full sprint, Sparkrod propelled himself into the air with powerful electrical propulsion as Superior watched him leave. His entire body emitted a blue light in mid-flight as he dematerialized, signaling that he had logged out of the game. Superior once again simulated an imaginary huff of breath as she glanced up at the massive golden statue of the hero Freedom that stood at the center of the Hall of Heroes. Well, that was awkward. She took her time walking out of the large white and gleaming blue hall, passing smaller silver statues of other heroes within the game, like Abe Rogers and Shintobi, and the equipment terminals used for purchasing extra gear was no longer operational. Seeing that she was pressed for time, she chose to hover the rest of the way to the main door, which led her to a simulated Washington, D.C. at night. It was pretty much empty save for one or two players running around one final time, 
and the non-playable characters still actively going about their programmed business. With a sonic boom, Superia launched herself into the skies, clearing the building tops, heading in the direction of the Washington Monument, where one of the flight obstacles was located. As she neared the digital version of the famed memorial, she reduced her speed, going into a hover as her eyes located the starting point of the course, a glowing white platform floating in the middle of the air. The second she floated into position, white holographic numbers appeared, counting down from five to one, followed by a ringing bell signaling for her to begin her run. As a confident smirk formed on her lips, Superior extended her arms and rattled the sky for a second time, propelling herself at hypersonic speeds, soaring, diving, and weaving as she punched through holographic yellow star after yellow star. Reckless abandonment was her fuel as she ignored the digital time clock recording her progress while she skillfully navigated the course. Superior had flown through multiple sessions to gain power-ups, special prizes, and to put herself on the leaderboard just to piss some of her ill-wishers off. As she swooped down, going full throttle to the goal line, a sneer fell on her face as she gritted her teeth, barreling through a male NPC walking into her flight path. The digital timer flashed red as a full minute was added back onto her time, as a penalty for hitting a civilian. Superior erupted into a slew of curse words as she crossed the line, finishing under a top score held by Titanium Terra, one of her most prominent critics. She landed, cratering the concrete ground on impact, continuing her temper tantrum with a tirade of profanity. Son of a bitch! You worthless piece of... Seeking vengeance, Superior grabbed the nearest four-wheeled vehicle she could find employing her superhuman strength to effortlessly lift it into the air. Stalking the downed NPC struggling to get up, she hammered him repeatedly with the vehicle, causing other NPCs within the area to scatter, screaming via their programming whenever danger was near. On the first hit, the life bar on the NPC disappeared, signaling that he was deceased. She struck him repeatedly until there was nothing left of the vehicle. A frustrated superior spat on the NPC's vehicular grave before taking to the air. She went into cruise mode, quietly flying through the city both to blow off some steam and reminisce one final time. As she flew about the town, superior replayed memories of battles, adventures, and sexual escapades she partook in during her time in Evo Universe Online. One of many MMO games employed the full submersion neural rig, a bodysuit and helmet to transport a player's mind into a digital body they created to interact within the 3D world around them. The neural rig also allowed the player to see, feel, hear, and even smell things as if they were in the real world. They were also capable of feeling sensations such as power boosts when their experience points increased, pain from an attack or injury, pleasure from a kiss or sexual interaction from mature players, as long as both had the adult package added to their neural rigs. Interaction with NPCs in the game was also part of increasing or decreasing one's experience points, the key to power boosts. If a superhero injured or killed a civilian or hero NPC, their experience points dropped. Their experience points increased if they saved a civilian or hero NPC or defeated a henchman or supervillain NPC. Supervillain players' points increased and decreased when they did the exact opposite of hero players. Although Superior was a hero in the game, she was infamously known for her antics that got her booted out of 25 team leagues for breaking their personal rules. One of the first laws that most hero teams followed was no sexual misconduct inside the base of operations. The few teams that allowed it was always maxed out at the 50-player capacity, which was implemented to prevent groups from becoming full-blown armies and dominating other groups in the game itself, although some teams bypassed this rule by creating alliances with each other to increase their numbers. Superior slowed to a hover over New York Avenue looking down at the former team base of operations belonging to the League of Virtue, the 25th team to kick her out. It was also the lengthiest team she had been on, lasting for nearly a year.